In the name of God, present in all the moments of life. Amen. Good morning. It is such a joy for us to be with you this day. It's a joy for me to have Sarah and Alex come. Sarah was eight years old when we moved here. She's a bit older now. But also, she brought two children, our grandkids, two of our grandkids. Max and Caden, would you wave? There you go. Caden is now eight years old today. So not his birthday, but he's eight years old. <laughs> so that's, you were the size of your mom when she uh, came to St. Matthew Church. It is powerful and emotional for me to once again be in this sacred space. The chimes, the choir, the cross. It is a privilege to celebrate with you the 60th anniversary of the founding of St. Matthew United Church of Christ. But did you know that I am your middle child? I am. There were about 23 years before I darkened the doors of this church, and there have been about 23 years since I departed. I was here in the middle. I am a witness to what went before and a celebrant of all that has followed. Doesn't seem that long ago to me but probably does to you. In the eons of time, 60 years may not seem like all that much, but it's enough. Enough for unique ministries to make significant contributions to each of your homes and this community. Enough for scores of baptisms, weddings, and funerals all within the grace and presence of God. To help give me an idea and to acknowledge you, let me ask for just a moment those members who have been here for at least 30 years, would you please stand? If you've been here 40 years or more, remain standing. 50 years or more. Thank you. Thank you. You are all a witness to the faithfulness of this congregation. Marilyn read our scripture this day, and I thank you for that. You are unique in your own right, but you are also a representative of many people this day, many very, very special people this day. The scripture you read was one of my favorites. It is from the book of Hebrews, and contrary to what most people think, especially confirmands, it is in the New Testament, not the old, as the title Hebrews would imply. Hear one line again. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that clings so tightly, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Wow. To me, that image, surrounded by this cloud of witnesses is so powerful, is such a great symbol of what surrounds each one of us every day. For no matter what, you are surrounded by such a cloud, a cloud of the living and the dead. And though we are often separated by time or distance, 
separated by the demands of life, we are each part of that cloud, each our own distinct testimonies and experiences. I could have a wonderful conversation with each of you about who is in your cloud, and I would enjoy that. The events and persons which have led you to what you believe today, and even more importantly, how you live today. For to realize that I am surrounded, that you are surrounded by such a cloud changes how you live and move and have your being. To believe that I and you are surrounded by God's cloud of witnesses is so empowering and humbling. Why, I might be able even to establish a church on such a rock as that. And I do remember witnesses and celebrate witnesses with you this day. As your middle child, my memories are limited, so I count on you to add others. But I do remember. I remember our founding members. There were 13 when I began my ministry with you, and I remember speaking with each of them about the days of daring to believe that the United Church of Christ could establish a congregation in Wheaton. I believe that many of you know that there was a congregational church in Wheaton established in the middle of the 1800s. It was instrumental in founding Wheaton College, which was originally a congregational college. But a tornado hit Wheaton in the early 1900s and took off the top of the church. Those were difficult economic times and the congregational denomination did not have any money to give the church to rebuild. But the Presbyterians said, if you'll rebuild your church and become Presbyterian, we will provide the funding. And so it was and is today. And losing its anchor and nature, the nature and focus of Wheaton College changed radically. But 40 years later, your founding members trusted God's call to establish St. Matthew United Church of Christ, which has always been a United Church of Christ, not one of our prior denominations. This church was one of the first and one of only a handful that were established in 1959 that is still in existence. Maryland and those charter members are part of my cloud of witnesses, and I give thanks. For when I began my ministry among you, it would have been very easy for them to say, John, we're glad you're here, but we started this church, and we'd like it done this way. They did not. Not once. In every case, they were the most supportive of all to the strange ideas that were brought by this young new minister. One of my witnesses is Rosalie Broman. Back when our mission committee had this idea that we should somehow participate in helping homeless in our area, we heard God's call to feed the hungry and shelter the homeless. At that point, the closest homeless shelter was in Aurora. And so for many months, Rosalie would make this huge cauldron of bean soup, and about a dozen of us would go out to Aurora, a witness to who is my neighbor. Another witness for me was Eck Lelbach. On the night before I was voted in as your senior minister, in a receiving line in what used to be Fellowship Hall back there, Eck asked me if I knew anything about family camp. 
I did, and I believed in it. And Eck and others made it happen. Church family camp had such a power to build community, a community where we cared and supported each other, and most importantly, brought those building blocks back to this congregation. And I remember Keith Evans, his passion for the youth of our community. Keith was one that helped found Wheaton Youth Outreach, which over so many years helped countless numbers of young people. And I remember a witness that you still know today, Dave Mook. I'm not sure I could say all this about Dave, but... <laughs> But he was this corporate lawyer that transformed into church janitor <laughs> and committed work camper, witnessing for me that our faith is never pretentious and never seeks to be in the spotlight. Yes, I carry those clouds of witnesses with me, and they have nurtured and strengthened my faith wherever I have been and whatever I have done, and I give great thanks. But this morning is not just about a cloud of witnesses from the past, no matter how much I cherish them, because you, today, are part of that cloud. You proclaim in word and more importantly in deed, what it means to be a Christian community in 2019 in Wheaton, Illinois. Well, what does that mean? Luckily, since I'm retired, that's a task for Alan and for each of you every day. And each of you, I know, could tell me what it means to you. But let me tell you first then another favorite scripture of a former minister of this church, Sherry Prestman. It is from Micah in the Hebrew scriptures. What does the Lord require of you but to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? If you write that on your heart, 60 years is only a very small beginning. And finally, that cloud of witnesses is not only about the past or even the present. Please consider with me that God's cloud includes the future. Your cloud of witnesses includes all those who have yet to hear of St. Matthew Church. All those who hunger and thirst for righteousness but have not been enveloped in this wonderful cloud. Your future is also a witness today because those who come through your door tomorrow or 60 years from now will call you to new ministries and to new visions of God's hope. I am totally convinced that it will be those witnesses that you have yet to meet that will lead you to God's faithful future. Those witnesses are those tiny mustard seeds which will continue to grow and blossom in your world. So my testimony to you this morning is to continue to look for God's ever-present kingdom. Look for the divine with flesh on. Plant seeds of God's and Christ's presence and love and celebrate the harvest of faith, which is rarely in the headlines, but you'll see them if you look and listen and plant some yourself. What will the next 60 years or 100 years bring? 
I have no idea. I don't know where God will call St. Matthew Church tomorrow. But if you look and listen, God will continue to call you to old and new ministries, old and new challenges, old and new faces. And do more than look. Be the vision of increasing your love for God and neighbor. Go gratefully in tomorrow with eyes open, with hearts ready to care, and ears attuned to the ever-present call of God. And by the way, please invite us back for your 75th anniversary. <laughs> Amen. A lot of witnesses continues. Thank you, John.